Electrical troubleshooting. Step 1. Understand how the system works. Your bike has an electrical problem. This may seem a daunting task, but even a novice can accomplish many basic electrical tests and arrive at the source of the problem by keeping a few simple things in mind. First off, before you jump in and test things, or worse, start replacing things, make sure you know exactly how the malfunctioning system should work. For this, you need a wiring diagram. So let's keep it simple and look at a typical headlight circuit and break it down. In this example, we'll use our Climber Ninja Manuals wiring for reference. However, the theory we'll cover will apply to any circuit or machine. We want to know how the consumer, in this case the headlight, is powered. How it is grounded, is it fused, how does the switch function, and identify the connectors. Now of course if the headlight was inoperative, we'd assume the bulb is bad, and start there. But bear with me as we use this as our test circuit and think how we would apply this same systematic approach to one that might not provide such an obvious place to start as a bad bulb. Working from the consumer backwards. Power to the headlight comes from the dimmer switch. When the switch is in the high beam position, the red-black wire is connected to the blue-yellow wire. When in the low beam position, it is the orange-yellow wire. Following the blue-yellow wire, we arrive at the headlight relay. When the relay is activated, power is from the 10 amp headlight fuse. The fuse receives power from the brown wire when the ignition switch is on. Power to the ignition switch is through the white wire and we arrive at the 30 amp main fuse, which is connected to the battery. So we've identified two fuses and three switch devices in the power supply portion of the headlight circuit. And we have connectors at the bulb, dimmer switch, junction box, and ignition switch to consider. Next up is a look at the ground side of the circuit. By tracing the black-yellow wire, we quickly see that the headlight shares a common ground with all the other consumers. So we can make a quick test of the main frame ground by simply testing the function of some other components. For example, does the horn work? Is the headlight bulb the only bulb out? They all share this same ground circuit. If they work, then chances are the ground is good. On the power side, does the low beam work and does the high beam indicator work? If they do, then without any extensive testing, we've narrowed the circuit malfunction down to either the power or ground parts of the circuit that only apply to the high beam bulb. So in just a few minutes, we now understand how the system works by identifying the following. Power, ground, fuses, switches, connectors, and wiring. With this information and looking at other consumers in the same circuit, you are ready to test the system systematically with basic continuity and voltage tests.